My name is Josh. And I'm Seth. And we are zoology students, and we're going to take you on a whistle stop tour of the highlights of the zoology museum in Cambridge. And our first highlight is actually up there. So this is our first specimen and it is a fin whale, which is the second largest species of whale and is actually the largest museum exhibit that is in Cambridge. Um, it's 21 metres long and weighed over 80 tonnes when it came here and it was actually found on a beach. Yeah, so this fin whale was found on a beach in Sussex in 1865 and it came to the museum in 1866. And one of the really cool things you can see with this specimen is all these baleen plates in its mouth. And how these huge whales feed is they sort of lunge at balls of fish and krill and they take in loads of water and then they sort of ex expel it all using their throat cleaves. And then these baleen plates kind of sieve out all the krill that are in the water. So now we're going to go and look at some of the highlights of the main galleries. So here we have two famous extinct birds. And Dodo here is really famous for being the first bird that people kind of realise that they're driven to extinction. So they were found on the island of Mauritius, and because they were flightless, they were driven to extinction within 100 years of people arriving on the island in the late 16th century, uh, because of hunting for food and also the introduction of rats and cats that could eat them and eat their chicks and eggs. And here we have the Great Auk, which is the Northern Hemisphere's equivalent of a penguin. And they were hunted into extinction, I think the last pair were found in 1844, and they were also hunted to extinction for their oil, feathers and eggs. These two specimens in particular are really special, because this is one of the most complete dodo skeletons in the whole world. And in fact, all the dodo skeletons, or most of the dodo skeletons in museums, were all discovered in a particular swap around 200 years after they'd gone extinct. And this specimen is also particularly special because it is the specimen which the scientific description of the Great Orc was formulated from. And next up, we're going to go and have a look at a goblin shark over here. So this goblin shark here is maybe not one of the kind of typical highlights, but this is one of my favourite specimens. Because they have this really cool way of feeding, where their mouth can sort of leap out of their, of their skull to sort of grab fish that are in front of them. Uh, and they also have this weird sort of snout that might be used as a sort of electro-reception to kind of detect fish in the deep sea. Josh, Josh, that's great, but if you come with me, I'll take you to an actual highlight, the birds of paradise. So here we have a load of perching birds, and these are the biggest group of birds. And what's really exciting is that in this case, we've also got some birds of paradise from Papua New Guinea. And what is amazing about birds in paradise is the complete uh, sexual dimorphism in the plumage between males and females. So males have evolved these elaborate displays and traits and do all kinds of weird performances. In the museum, we have some specimens of birds of paradise which were collected by Alfred Russell Wallace, who was the co-discoverer of evolution by natural selection, with Darwin of course. And on the topic of Darwin, the museum actually has some of Darwin's original specimens. Now, Darwin was a student at the University of Cambridge, although he missed out on his lectures to go and collect beetles. After university, Darwin was invited to go on the voyage of the beagle, which travelled all around the world, but is most famously known for his trip to the Galapagos Islands. So whilst in the Galapagos, the beagle crew collected some of these Galapagos finches. And when Darwin returned to England and started to write up his findings, these formed a crucial part of his formulation of the theory of natural selection. So, last but not least, certainly not least, we have the giant ground sloth, which went extinct about 10,000 years ago in South America. Now this actually coincides with when humans first arrived in South America, which is a down to your own interpretation. There is something about the climate, but... But yeah, we're not entirely sure why they went extinct, but it was probably a combination of human hunting and climate change. But these were absolutely huge animals, they could weigh up to four tonnes uh, and they probably had quite a big impact on the environment where they lived because they could have sort of torn down branches off the trees and things. Uh, and some species also burrowed, which is absolutely incredible because they're such huge animals. So that brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching and hopefully you'll enjoy your visit when you come to the museum. Bye guys!